My name is Nathaniel Dodson, and in today's Illustrator tutorial, we're going to take a look at creating this cool geometric dot artwork. It's really neat, and there's some really cool uh, techniques and sort of little tricks that you can do to create this type of artwork quickly and get that sort of dappled color or just randomized color everywhere. It's really neat. I think you're really going to enjoy it. So stick around and check it out. It all gets started right now. All right, we're going to create this cool geometric artwork here in Adobe Illustrator. I'm going to throw a new layer here onto my document to see what I'm doing. Uh, now this, I'm not going to lie, it was inspired by a tutorial I saw. It had to have been a couple of years ago on YouTube uh, about geometric shape design or something like that where they do uh, a similar thing with hexagons, but we're going to kind of take it to another level um, and do it the way that I kind of have been doing designs like this probably pretty much ever since seeing that tutorial. It's a really cool technique, um, but we're going to take it a couple steps further as you're going to see here in just a moment. All right, we kick it off by grabbing the polygon tool and we click a single time. And I'm gonna say, give me a polygon of 900 pixels in the radius department. And uh, let's go with the six sided uh, affair here. So you can see it is absolutely massive, uh, quite a bit bigger than maybe I initially thought, uh, but we're gonna work with it out here on the gray. I know we just uh, had that beautiful background, but we're gonna move it back over the background in a minute. And I'm gonna pop open my other set of toolbars here because I'm worried about the properties panel right now. I wanna flip my fill and stroke. So I'm gonna hit the little flippy flop arrow over here to swap fill and stroke. You can see the stroke is tiny. I'll make it a little bit bigger here. Let's go like 15 points. You can see that, right? We can all see that. And what I wanna do is click on the word stroke to open my stroke panel. A couple things we wanna do here. Number one, we wanna make this a dashed line. So we can see here, we got this nice little dashiness happening, but I want them to be dots. I don't want them to be these kind of weird looking little square uh, pellets or whatever they are. So we want them to be dots. So I'm zooming in to get a closer look. All right, back to the stroke panel. I'm going to round the caps. All right. And also what I'm going to do is say, look, dash, I don't want you to be 12 points. I want you to be like one point and I want a pretty reasonable size gap. Let's go with like 50 points, maybe something like that. So now we can see we have this dotted line shooting all the way around our, uh, our polygon here. Now let me zoom back in. I don't know if you noticed this, uh, but look at this where we have our dots that land on the corners. If I open up stroke, panel here. I am, by the way, using this anchor or sort of yeah, align the dashes to the corners and path ends. I always think of it as anchoring to the corners. What that means is we're going to have a dot on each one of the corners of our polygon, right? See how there's at each corner, there is a nice dot. So it's a very uniform set of dots, which is beautiful and perfect. Exactly what I want. However, if I zoom back in, you can see that the corner dots have this weird teardrop effect, which is not cool, not what we want at all. How do we fix that? Well, if we go back to stroke, not only do we change cap to rounded cap, we need to change corner to rounded corner. And there we go. We just kind of round out. It's still slightly oblong unless I'm just seeing things, uh, but it's way less noticeable as far as being a funky looking shape than that little uh, teardrop shaped corner dot was uh, just a moment ago. So let's apply a gradient to the stroke. That's right, you can apply a gradient to the stroke. Now we wanna do this, if I look up here to my color panel, uh, you're gonna see that I have the fill color to the foreground. That means if I adjust the color, it's gonna add a big fill to this. We don't want that. We wanna select stroke, bring the stroke to the foreground. And now you can see, now we got a red stroke and now it's kind of greenish yellow and all that. We wanna add a gradient though, so I'm gonna select gradients and let's go with like a, a yellow to orange to like a hot pink kind of gradient. So I'm gonna add a middle point to my gradient. Let's select the white point here and I am going to say, let's go HSB and I'm going to make this yellow. So I'm going to pump the saturation up and let's slide this over to about yellow. There we go. Let's go for the middle point now and we're going to again, HSB, we're going to give this about an orange. So let's say orange, 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 something kind of like that should be good. And then over here for this part, we're again going to hit the fly out menu, choose not RGB. We're going to choose HSB because we're just going uh, all full custom here. And I want to go red, but like with sort of a, just a, a tip a favor toward this kind of hot pink red, uh, not just a full rich cherry red, uh, but something that has a little bit of that, just a tinge of that hot pink to it. So there's our gradient and we've applied that gradient to our stroke. So you can see the gradient is applied to the stroke, not the fill. All right, now here's where things get cool and a little crazy. We're gonna go effect, we're gonna choose distort and transform and transform. Now here in the transform panel, if it pops up, here we go. I'm gonna set it over here. Here in the transform panel, we wanna do uh, a couple things. I am going to first and foremost say, look, create a bunch of copies. Let's go with like 25. We might end up doing more than that, but let's go 25 now. And I turn on preview and nothing happens. What's the big deal? Well, uh, we need to we need to make some adjustments here. So let's say, let's change the, let's change the scale. Let's say, each uh, each additional copy needs to be 90% thinner 
and 90% less tall. So now you can see this effect that we're getting here and things are getting a little wild. But that's not quite good enough. Actually, I know that I want this to be at 91%, not 90%. And then I want to tweak the angle. So I'm just going to select the angle input and use my arrow key here and just twist this design until I like the way it looks. So if you go kind of too far, you're going to start getting this really starbursty effect. But maybe that's what you want. And that looks really cool to you. For me, that's a little bit too complex with all these dots. I'm going to untwist it. I probably want around 12 degrees. Let's see what 12 degrees looks like. That looks like a bit of a vortex. And if we want the vortex to go deeper, see how big the hole in the center is. Just bump up the number of copies. Maybe we'll push this up to like 32 and see that we're just adding layers there to the middle. I'm going to hit okay. And this is kind of the effect that I remember uh, from the other tutorial. I don't know if the, they use dots or not, or just solid, uh, solid strokes. So if we go to stroke and we shut off the dashed line, you see, you're going to get this kind of effect. I'm going to keep the dashed or the dotted line, I should say. Uh, but use the, I've, I've got a card. I'm just going to link to that video so you can check that out as well in case uh, something else was covered there that I missed here. Like I said, it was a little while ago that I watched it and this is just how I kind of always do it now. So you can check that out, show him some love and uh, then continue on of course with this tutorial because we got a lot more cool stuff coming here. So now to create the system of dots, we actually want to get rid of the gradient. I just had it there to kind of show you how cool it looked and really be able to visualize this twist that we're putting on our graphics. Let's just go ahead and get rid of the gradient. We're going to do that by hitting the little solid color uh, here in the bottom of our toolbar for our stroke. And you can see we're back to just this system of just kind of plain colored dots. Still looks cool. Doesn't have the same kind of dimension, but we're going to be changing this up here in just a minute. We want to go ahead here and choose object expand appearance. And what we've done, if I open up this layer is we have this polygon and you can see within it, we have this whole series of groups of dots. We need to expand this further. We need to keep expanding and ungrouping until we just have a bunch of little dot shapes. So we're going to choose expand and I'm going to expand all the strokes. I don't want to expand the fills. I don't need to expand the fills. So I'm just going to leave stroke checked on expand the strokes to fills. And now what I have is a bunch of groups as well. So I want to ungroup object ungroup. And if I do that, you can see I still have a bunch of groups. So we're going to go object ungroup again. And I still have a bunch of groups. So I'm going to go object ungroup again. And now I've got a bunch of compound paths as well as regular paths. So we're going to go object compound path, release those compound paths. And now we have a whole bunch of dots. Now, because I have my artboard clean and I can easily drag a selection around all of these, I don't need to group them up. But if you were working with complex artwork, I would probably regroup the dots. And then right before we apply the colors, we would just ungroup this series of dots. So I'm going to group it up just so I can just click it a single time and the whole thing will be selected. Uh, but it's really up to you however you want to select it uh, at that point. The next step is to jump out somewhere like Adobe Color and choose a color scheme that you like. Choose five or six colors, or uh, maybe you have some colors in mind, or maybe you wanna go ahead and create a new color scheme. You can do that under here under create. You can also drag an image in that you like, a landscape, a photo of somebody, or a, a scene that you really enjoy, maybe from a movie, and you wanna get the essence of that, that still film uh, grab, or that film frame, I should say. You can drag it into here, and Adobe Color will automatically detect the colors and create a five swatch color scheme for you. Uh, I'm just gonna go back to explore, and what you can do is just let's say we like this color scheme you can click on it here and just choose to add it to your library and it'll add it to your library here in illustrator where is that well it's under window libraries and by the way this only works if you have creative cloud in terms of getting the color this way if you don't have creative cloud you can still follow along with the tutorial you just are going to need to create a color scheme kind of manually which is no problem uh, i have all these color uh themes here but maybe let's jump back out to Adobe Color. Let's see if we can find something that we, we think is interesting here. I'm going to deselect. I want a little bit more of like a red, white, blue. So let's go French. I guess I could say American. But it's kind of those those French colors are, are dancing in my head right now. So maybe we can go with something like this. This is kind of a cool looking color scheme right here. So I'm just going to select this. I'm going to choose Add to Library. It's going to say, look, theme was successfully added to your color schemes library. That's great. And by the way... Up here is where you choose the library to which the color schemes are added. I just have color schemes selected. So if it's not going to, to a color scheme or a folder like that in your Creative Cloud library, that might be what the problem is. And here it is, a French Affair Do. And we're going to take this and I'm going to right click on it and say, look, add this entire theme to my swatches. And we're done with the Creative Cloud stuff. Over here in swatches, there's our color theme. So now, how do we apply this across all these dots and make it look good and interesting and everything else? Well... This is where you want to download a script for Illustrator and don't be scared. It's free and it's so easy to do. 
out here, run a Google search for like uh, random, random swatches fill illustrator script, and you're going to find this. And you want to go ahead and download this script. And you can see here, you install the script into whether you have Windows or Mac, just install it into the appropriate folder. And what's going to happen is you need to close Illustrator down and reopen it. And here under file scripts, you're going to have random swatches fill as an option. And this is exactly what we want. But how does this work? Well, here's all you have to do. We select that group. Of course, we want to ungroup it because we want all raw pieces of artwork. So object ungroup. And then we need to command or control click in our swatches panel, the swatches that we're interested in. So I want to get all the colors from my little French theme here. So I'm going to hold down command or control, click on the seafoam green, that bluish purplish, the red, the white, and that mustardy yellow color. I got all those colors selected. I just held down my command key. That'd be control on the windows and clicked all of them. Once you have that and you have all your artwork selected, you go file, you go scripts, random swatches, fill, and there you have it. We've created all of those shapes and they all have all those different colors and they're applied that fast and that easy. Select them all, Commander Control G to group them up. And then I would take this down and for the real test, just scale it down a little bit, place it here over the background and look at the final effect that I have. Now, maybe to make this a little bit more interesting here, I could do something like select the group, go to my transparency panel, double click to add a layer mask. And well, you know what, before I create the layer mask, let's create the actual mask shape. So let's go ellipse tool. And let's drag out an ellipse here, kind of over the middle of our shape, you know, roughly like that. I'm going to select it and I'm going to go to my fill. I'm going to choose a black to white gradient. And then I'm going to choose gradient options, which is going to pop up my gradient panel, which is actually already open here. And I am going to set this to a radial gradient. I want black to be on the outside, but it's not really like a true rich black. It's kind of like a flat, eh, crappy black. So we're going to select our color panel. I have selected that handle right there. I'm sorry, I need to hit edit gradient. And now I have selected that black handle and I'm just gonna hit the, the true rich black swatch right there to give me like a real solid black, see that? And now what I can do is just kind of constrain the black. I'm gonna pull the middle point over and just push the black out to the outside a little bit. Something like that will work. And now that I have this, what's gonna be used as the mask where it's gonna fade from the white and drop off to black and everything outside of the black is gonna be gone. I'm gonna take the shape and we're gonna cut it, edit, cut. And now I go back to the group, select the group. Double click to open my transparency panel. Double click to add a mask. See, the mask is set to clip already, which means that it's all solid black. And we just go edit paste in front. And it's going to paste our little gradient in place. And you can see it's fading from white out to solid black. I deselect it. I can select here to go back to my original artwork. And there now we have this a bit of artwork. And it's just kind of spraying all over the place, looking pretty cool. Now, what we can do is we can take this. We can duplicate it. So just drag out a copy here, duplicate it, and we drag it up here. And I'm going to ungroup this. So right there, we've got, we've got, we've got, I'm going to ungroup this object, ungroup. And you can see it says, look, I got to release the mask. So the mask shape is here as well. I'm just going to hide the mask shape. We're going to select this entire thing, make sure while well, it is selected, we're going to go back to our swatches panel and maybe we want to add another color scheme and try, try another color scheme. Let's go window. Let's go libraries, not links. Let's go window. Let's go libraries. And I have a bunch of other colors here. Let's scroll down. We've got this here, which is a little bit more of a red, white, and blue looking affair. That might be kind of cooler. Let's right click on that and choose to add that theme to swatches. And maybe what I'll do too, I'm going to bump up here to just colors and I'm going to add all these colors to swatches as well. So I'll command or control click these since they're individual swatches with them all selected, right click and choose add color to swatches. And you can see, voila, all those colors just got added. So we have a couple different options we can play with here. We have all these uh, pieces selected. Let's go with our red, white, and blue. And I did not import the red, white, and blue. Let's go libraries. I must have accidentally undone that or undid that. Right click, add theme to swatches. It's so fast and easy. And then with that selected, I'm gonna just, well, I'll, I'll, I'll safe select it just to be sure. File scripts and random swatches fill. And we've got a totally different looking uh, set of stuff here, which is kind of cool. And what I'll do is turn the mask back on. I'm gonna select the mask shape and we need to cut it again, edit cut, and then group all these shapes together, right? Grab object group. The hotkey is command or control G by the way. And we'll just add that mask like we did before. Boom, paste it right in place. And voila, we have that. And what I can do here is take this Let's zoom out. Let's maybe set this up in the top corner. All right. So something like that. Actually, let's do these. Let's do them all across the middle. Something like so. 
and I'll grab both of these groups, open up my align panel. I'll just align them to each other, make sure that they're looking right. And then I'll drag them over into the document, kind of something like so. So very quickly and easily, we're not going to get quite to the red one today because it's just going to take extra time. And you get the point at this point, right? All these cool randomized colored dots. Uh, and there'll be a poll here on the video at this point, a little eye up in the top right corner of the video. Which color scheme do you like more? Uh, the sort of French or the more red, white, and blue color scheme? Which one do you think is cooler? And of course, the more you zoom in, you just see more and more crazy rich detail that's in here. It is certainly not lacking for detail, but that is how you take and create these geometric shapes and add a ton of randomized color throughout them in seconds. So yeah, that's it for this one, everybody. Thank you so much for watching it. If you enjoyed this video, number one, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn those notifications on so you never miss any tutorials in the future. And also check out this tutorial all about how to create custom fonts in Adobe Illustrator using the Font Self plugin. It's really cool. If you're a graphic designer and you work with clients and you want the ability to create custom typefaces or tweak and adjust typefaces and save them as new custom typefaces that you can use, oh, it's so powerful. It's such a cool tool. You absolutely should check it out. And uh, thank you so much for sticking around and watching this video all the way to the end. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, I'll catch you in the next one.